Just imagine North Korea in 20 years when everybody has to wear a biometric bracelet which constantly monitors your blood pressure, your heart rate, your brain activity, 24 hours a day. You listen to a speech on the radio by the great leader, and they know what you actually feel. You can clap your hands and smile, but if you're angry, they know you'll be in the gulag tomorrow morning. And if we allow the emergence of such total surveillance regimes, don't think that the rich and powerful in places like Davos will be safe. Uh, I'm the chairman of Bain & Company, and welcome to the session on how to survive the 21st century. It's not a new topic, uh, but it's really getting urgent. 18 years ago, Martin Rees, Britain's astronomer royal, published a book on the topic. He gave civilization a 50-50 chance of surviving the 21st century. Today, he says his concerns have only grown. He cites new technologies and environmental catastrophe as the reasons. Well, don't yell at me, yell at the technician. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Okay. Should I repeat what I said? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, well, first I introduce myself. I'm Arit Gadish. The order there is a little mis uh, misleading. I'm the chairman of Bain & Company, and I welcomed you to the session on how to survive the 21st century. Uh, I start by saying that this is not a new topic, and mentioned that uh, 18 years ago, Martin Rees, the Br Britain's astronomer royal, published a book on the topic. And he gave civilization a 50-50 chance of surviving the 21st century. He published another book this year, or actually last year, and his concerns have only grown. He cited technology and environmental catastrophe as reasons. Now, being over 30, it is highly unlikely that I will survive the 21st century. And some days, especially when I hear about the uh, fires in Australia, or hear of yet another example for data being used to manipulate us surreptitiously, I find myself kind of glad of that, but I fear that the next generations may live to see horrific things. But perhaps not, especially if we start to really get serious about the existential issues that are coming now into plain sight. With us today is Yuval Noah Harari. He's a best-selling author of three books. The latest is 21 Lessons for 21st Century. He's a historian and a philosopher. He has thought long and hard about three existential challenges, nuclear war, ecological collapse, and technological disruption. Also with us is Mark Rutte, also an historian. He's been the Prime Minister of the Netherlands for 10 years. In 2019, the World Economic Forum Competitors Report ranked the Netherlands as fourth globally and first in Europe. It's a pretty good report card for a nation with some real challenges that are relevant to the topic we're going to be talking about today. As many of you know, about a third of the country is below sea level. The Dutch are famous for their dikes. Uh, and they're also famous for the little boy who plugged the leak in one of those dikes uh, when, <laughs> until, uh, until help arrived. There are not enough little boys to just plug the threats that surround us today. But perhaps we can learn something from such devotion to a common good, which this is what you portrayed. To kick things off, Yuval is going to share some of his current thought. Thank you. So hello, everyone. I hope you hear me OK. If not, just make a sign. As we enter the third decade of the 21st century, Humanity faces so many issues and questions that it's really hard to know what to focus on. So I would like to use the next 20 minutes to help us focus. Of all the different issues we face, three problems pose existential challenges to our species. These three existential challenges are nuclear war, ecological collapse, and technological disruption. We should focus on them. Now, nuclear war and ecological collapse are already familiar threats, 
So let me spend some time explaining the less familiar threat posed by technological disruption. In Davos, we hear so much about the enormous promises of technology, and these promises are certainly real, but technology might also disrupt human society and the very meaning of human life in numerous ways, ranging from the creation of a global useless class to the rise of data colonialism and of digital dictatorships. First, we might face upheavals on the social and economic level. Automation will soon eliminate millions upon millions of jobs, and while new jobs will certainly be created, it is unclear whether people will be able to learn the necessary new skills fast enough. Suppose you're a 50 years old truck driver, and you just lost your job to a self-driving vehicle. Now, there are new jobs in designing software or in teaching yoga to engineers. But how does a 50 years old truck driver reinvent himself or herself as a software engineer or as a yoga teacher? And people will have to do it not just once, but again and again throughout their lives because the automation revolution will not be a single watershed event following which the job market will settle down into some new equilibrium. Rather, it will be a cascade of ever bigger disruptions because AI is nowhere near its full potential. All jobs will disappear, new jobs will emerge, but then the new jobs will rapidly change and vanish. Whereas in the past, humans has had to struggle against exploitation, in the 21st century, the really big struggle will be against irrelevance. And it's much worse to be irrelevant than to be exploited. Those who fail in the struggle against irrelevance would constitute a new useless class. People who are useless, not from the viewpoint of their friends and family, of course, but useless from the viewpoint of the economic and political system. And this useless class will be separated by an ever-growing gap from the ever more powerful elite. The AI revolution might create unprecedented inequality, not just between classes, but also between countries. In the 19th century, a few countries, like Britain and Japan, industrialized first, and they went on to conquer and exploit most of the world. If we aren't careful, the same thing will happen in the 21st century with AI. We are already in the midst of an AI arms race, with China and the USA leading the race, and most countries being left far, far behind. Unless we take action to distribute the benefits and power of AI between all humans, AI will likely create immense wealth in a few high-tech hubs, while other countries will either go bankrupt or will become exploited data colonies. Now, we aren't talking about a science fiction scenario of robots rebelling against humans. We are talking about far more primitive AI, which is nevertheless enough to disrupt the global balance. Just think, what will happen to developing economies once it is cheaper to produce textiles or cars in California than in Mexico? And what will happen to politics in your country in 20 years when somebody in San Francisco or in Beijing knows the entire medical and personal history of every politician, every judge, and every journalist in your country, including all their sexual escapades, all their mental weaknesses, and all their corrupt dealings? Will it still be an independent country? 
or will it become a data colony? When you have enough data, you don't need to send soldiers in order to control a country. Alongside inequality, the other major danger we face is the rise of digital dictatorships that will monitor everyone all the time. This danger can be stated in the form of a simple equation, which I think might be the defining equation of life in the 21st century. B times C times D equals R, which means biological knowledge multiplied by computing power multiplied by data equals the ability to hack humans. Ah. If you know enough biology and you have enough computing power and data, you can hack my body and my brain and my life and you can understand me better than I understand myself. You can know my personality type, my political views, my sexual preferences, my mental weaknesses, my deepest fears and hopes. You know more about me than I know about myself. And you can do that not just to me, but to everyone. A system that understands us better than we understand ourselves can predict our feelings and decisions, can manipulate our feelings and decisions, and can ultimately make decisions for us. Now, in the past, many tyrants and governments wanted to do it, but nobody understood biology well enough, and nobody had enough computing power and data to hack millions of people. Neither the Gestapo nor the KGB could do it. But soon, at least some corporations and governments will be able to systematically hack all the people. We humans should get used to the idea that we are no longer mysterious souls. We are now hackable animals. That's what we are. The power to hack human beings can of course be used for good purposes, like providing much better healthcare. But if this power falls into the hands of a 21st century Stalin, the result will be the worst totalitarian regime in human history, and we already have a number of applicants for the job of 21st century Stalin. Just imagine North Korea in 20 years, when everybody has to wear a biometric bracelet which constantly monitors your blood pressure, your heart rate, your brain activity, 24 hours a day. You listen to a speech on the radio by the great leader, and they know what you actually feel. You can clap your hands and smile, but if you're angry, they know you'll be in the gulag tomorrow morning. And if we allow the emergence of such total surveillance regimes, don't think that the rich and powerful in places like Davos will be safe. Just ask Jeff Bezos. In Stalin's USSR, the state monitored members of the communist elite more than anyone else. The same will be true of future total surveillance regimes. The higher you are in the hierarchy, the more closely you will be watched. Do you want your CEO or your president to know what you really think about them? So it's in the interest of all humans, including the elites, to prevent the rise of such digital dictatorships. And in the meantime, if you get a suspicious WhatsApp message from some prince, don't open it. Now, even if we indeed prevent the establishment of digital dictatorships, the ability to hack humans might still undermine the very meaning of human freedom. Because as humans will rely on AI to make more and more decisions for us, <coughs> authority will shift from humans to algorithms. And this is already happening. Already today, billions of people trust the Facebook algorithm to tell us what is new. The Google algorithm tells us what is true. Netflix tells us what to watch. And the Amazon... Just imagine...